Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to this evening's webinar, uh, looking at how you can use Read and Write to create engaging resources uh, for, and diverse resources for your students. Uh, apologies about the slight delay. We just have a large number uh, of attendees and registrants for the webinar this evening, so I just want to provide an extra few moments to allow everybody to get registered in after, uh, I'm sure, a busy day for you all. Uh, my name is Richard Michael, and I work within the Education Division here at TextHelp. As always, if you're familiar with our webinars, feel free to get in touch with me at any stage after the webinar. If there's anything that you perhaps see on the webinar today that's of particular interest to you, or uh, there's just anything you want to, to chat to me about in terms of using Read and Write and increasing your use of Read and Write uh, with your students. You've got my contact details there on screen. Feel free to reach out at any stage, uh, and myself or any member of the team um, that you're speaking to on the phone will be more than happy uh, to help you out with any of the questions uh, that uh, that you ask. So we're here today to show you guys uh, who are using Read and Write with students. Um, you've probably been to webinars in the past where we've looked at the basics of using Read and Write and beginning to you know show students how to use Read and Write and how Read and Write can benefit them. But today we're here to show you how Read and Write can support you whenever creating differentiated resources and worksheets uh, to support students using Read and Write. So I hope today I aim to give you a step-by-step -step guide through creating a range of resources uh, that support differentiated delivery for staff and differentiated learning uh, for students across all subjects, whilst really engaging um, a wide audience of students as well at the same time. Uh, the webinar is currently being recorded, so you'll all get access to the recording in 24 hours time um, after the webinar has concluded today. Just something I wanted to draw your attention to, uh, we'll hopefully get an opportunity to take a look at our website today as well. I do plan on going online at some stage as well. We have a training uh, section of our website. That is where uh, this was our little section of the website where we can help you out to get the most out of your software. Training, we've got YouTube channel as well, containing lots of different videos and uh, showing you how you can get the most out of Read and Write. Uh, this video will end up on YouTube. Uh, this webinar recording will end up on YouTube uh, as well uh, as receiving the recording tomorrow evening. Uh, of course, our webinars are already online, uh, activities and guides that are contained within the training portal, and of course, all the way supported by our very, 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 very good uh, tech support team uh, as well, should you have any technical questions uh, that you would like to ask the guys. So as you know, Read and Write is across, available across every device. We'll hopefully take a look at a couple of the different toolbars uh, today as we're going through the presentation. At the minute, you can pro possibly see at the top of my screen, I've got the Read and Write for Windows toolbar open up. So we'll begin with Read and Write for Windows, and then we'll hopefully take a look across at Read and Write for Google Chrome uh, as well a little bit later on in today's session. So for those of you that are unfamiliar, Read and Write works as a toolbar. If you can't see my toolbar dock to the top of my screen, you can see in the image uh, that's currently on your main screen, uh, you'll be able to see the Read and Write toolbar on there. So who does Read and Write benefit? Teachers, SENCOs, exam officers can benefit from using Read and Write. Parents uh, can benefit from using Read and Write um, as well, anyone anyway, that's got Read and Write in the home. Of course, the obvious one there, students uh, can benefit from using Read and Write. Students on a day-to-day -day basis in lessons, uh, whenever they're studying, whenever they're working towards completing assignments, uh, there's tools, learning tools within Read and Write uh, that can support them any any time and any place. And of course, it'll all be benefit the principal or the school head whenever students are achieving results uh, that are a benefit to, to the, the overall school. So I suppose Read and Write initially started out as a tool to support struggling readers and writers. And I suppose that's how Read and Write ended up with the name uh, Read and Write. But since then, it's become a tool to support a lot um, more areas of your school. In fact, any EAL learner, uh, any learner whose first language isn't English, um, they're wanting to learn the curriculum in English, and therefore having a tool like Read and Write becomes very, very important uh, to those students as it allows them to access, using the various tools of Read and Write, everything that they're learning in the new topics that are being presented in front of them. SEN students, any student with dyslexia can benefit from using Read and Write. Uh, our screen masking tool as well, uh, can benefit any students with Erlen syndrome or suffering from scotopic sensitivity, especially when looking at a screen. Uh, your MFL learners as well, uh, so any student who is 
uh, studying a modern foreign language can use the features within Read and Write to improve their fluency and listen and hear how they sound uh, compared to correct pronunciation with our international voices as well. Vocabulary tables will also help uh, with all three of these areas really to help students to become familiar and more comfortable with new terminology that they're learning. So in turn, these are various groups of students and, and of course not forgetting your auditory and your visual learners as well. These are all groups of students that you guys are creating resources uh, to stimulate and engage uh, and include in all of your lessons. So with all of these learner profiles, these learner types in mind, we're going to look today at how we can create engaging and diverse resources uh, using Read and Write to support these students. So we'll take a look at the products in action uh, now and just say, hopefully starting off with Read and Write for Windows and hopefully if we have time, Read and Write for Google Chrome thereafter. One other point just to make out, uh, I normally put this up on screen, but I don't have it today. In your uh, GoToWebinar window that's currently on your screen, you will be able to see a question panel. If you do have any questions throughout today's demonstration, feel free to type your question into that panel and I will do my best to keep a close eye on that as we're going through today um, and answer any questions that do come up uh, in that little chat screen. Uh, of course, all your microphones are muted today, so the best way of asking a question is via the chat function, that question function. And of course, at the end of today, I'll hang around for any questions that you may have to ask me just at the end. So, of course, any questions, there we go. Feel free to ask those at any stage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up a Word document, first of all, um, and take you back to the very start, the basics uh, of using Read and Write. So here we have uh, Unit 1 of a BTEC in Business. Uh, and for those of you that don't know or maybe unfamiliar with Read and Write, the core functionality is the play icon. Uh, here just to the just left of center of the toolbar and it allows me to read any text aloud so first of all even before we look at how you read and write can support you when creating resources by providing your students with read and write and encouraging them to use read and write and that it's on the system they can simply click on any text that they want to read like the case study the outline here followed by play to have the text read aloud for them you are part of a team that work for a government agency called Business Northeast. Just turn my volume right up to 100 and let you hear that again. The company has been commissioned to hold an exhibition about business opportunities in the Northeast in order to attract and advise people of what opportunities are available to them from starting. We can pause the text at any stage. We can stop. We can skip forward, skip back. You are part of a team that work. Okay, so using those tools. The student can manipulate and be independent for the text that they're having read aloud on the screen. Of course, other features that we'll look at in just a second, like the dictionary, picture dictionary, all come into play whenever the student wants to gain more of a comprehension uh, of what they are reading. But the first thing that I would like to introduce you to today uh, as staff members, which you'll find very, very uh, useful, hopefully, whenever you're providing content to your students, it's impossible the content, or it's it's imperative. Sorry, I should have said that the content is accessible uh, for all of your students first and foremost. If your the text isn't accessible, this document that we're looking at is accessible. If it's not accessible, the student won't be able to read it. So if they are um, an English language learner, they may not be able to read this text and may require something like read, read and write. Maybe due to dyslexia, they're having difficulty reading certain terms or reading certain sentences of this text. So it's really, really important that all of the text is accessible. If I just open up a PDF file, and most of my PDF files on my system tend to be accessible PDF files already. But I'll give you an example. If I'm opening up a PDF file using PDF Reader uh, in Read and Write toolbar, go to my training materials section. And if I open up, for example, here, and PDF scan. Okay. Now, if we say, for example, that this is an inaccessible PDF file, a PDF file that can't be read aloud. So if I was trying to click on this text or highlight any of this text, I can't because it's simply just an image containing text. Now, that's not very accessible for my students. And whenever I was teaching myself uh, before joining Text Help, I used to come across an awful lot of PDF files that were fantastic, containing a lot of really important information. However, I wasn't able to make any changes to it, to adapt it uh, to my own students. 
uh, which I used to find very, very frustrating, and I ended up used to used to having to rework a lot of PDF files that I found, um, you know, in order to create them for my class, which took an awful lot of time. Um, but therefore, there's a feature that I'm going to show you now uh, in Read and Write that can possibly save you a lot of time by making text like this accessible. So it is a PDF file, and uh, just it's been a scanned page of a booklet. Uh, turned into PDF format. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to introduce you to our scanner. Uh, and our scanner has the ability to convert large amounts of text to accessible format to allow any of those struggling readers to access it. So I'm going to show you the inputs. I'm going to start off by clicking on the main scanning feature. So I've just clicked on the main feature on the toolbar. And two different types of scan that you can carry out here. You can scan from device or you can scan from file. So the device may be, and you can see in the image there, a flatbed scanner connected up to your laptop or PC, or it may be an iPhone, or it may be an iPad where you've taken a photograph or an image of something, uh, and you can hook that device up to your laptop and extract any file, any inaccessible file from that device and turn it into an accessible PDF or an accessible Word document. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a file, uh, so I've selected the file option, and I'm going to click on select file, the blue hyperlink here. Now this takes me to the folders in my system to where I have a PDF file that I may want to scan. So I'm going to click on education, I'm going to click on PDF scan, and I'm going to turn it into a Word document. Okay, so that exact same, that portrait of survival PDF, I'm going to convert it from an inaccessible PDF directly into a Word document. I'm going to click on Scan. Now, the last thing I'm asked to do, I'm going to save it to my desktop as well. So, uh, Portrait of Survival Scan. And click on Save. Now, the OCR that you're currently seeing taking place is optical character recognition. So, during the scan, it's going to analyze that PDF file for any text that's contained within that image. And then it's going to convert it through and create a Word document for me. So all of this text is now in a Word document. Now you may look at it and think, oh, it's not perfect. Um, but this is simply how it looked in the PDF file. I can now access all of this text. I can highlight all of this text. I can click on any of the text and use the play icon in progress. to read it aloud. Okay. I can take a full sentence if I didn't want to have this sentence in my text. I can manipulate this text using all the editing tools of Microsoft Word uh, because it's now fully accessible as a Word document. There was another thing that I could do at this stage where I really was unhappy with the layout of the text. I could go back into the text. I could simply copy or cut that text and paste it as plain text, this little A, okay, into a Word document. I suppose there's some spaces I could go back, and it now just looks like plain text. So if you're unhappy with the formatting, you can always change that by copying and pasting as plain text into a Word document. So that is one way that you can guarantee that all of your text will be accessible uh, for your students. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, another PDF file again. Uh, so again, inaccessible text, thinking about text that can't be accessed by students. If it was just a snapshot that I wanted, if it wasn't the entire document uh, that I wanted, I could click on PDF Reader this time. Oh, there we go, close scanner first. Okay, we'll go for economics. So if we pretend that this is another inaccessible PDF file, we've got another feature here called the screenshot reader. Now what the screenshot reader is the ability to do, any inaccessible text you come across, you can select the screenshot reader and simply draw a box around any of the text you want to read aloud. 
So if it is very, very difficult text to read, you've always got the option of using the screenshot reader. The working on it is the same as the OCR. Economies is more than a way to see patterns or to unravel puzzling anomalies. Its fundamental concern is with the material standard of living of. Okay, I'm going to get our play icon to reread any of that text to save us uh, drawing the box each time. What I really want to show you the screenshot reader for, if you want to take this first paragraph, for example, from uh, this PDF, and we couldn't access, I'm sure you're all familiar with the PDF files that you've come across that you can't access, uh, that you really can't grab any of the text or highlight any of the text. If you go to screenshot reader from the read and write settings and select screenshot to Microsoft Word, okay? This time, the screenshot that you take, let's take a slightly larger screenshot. This isn't gonna be read aloud for me, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna be taken from this PDF file and placed directly into a Word document, okay, where then I will be able to make any changes or edits to it. I'll show you that one more time with the Portrait of Survival uh, PDF file. So open up uh, the original PDF file. Okay, and screenshot reader again, first paragraph, take your screenshot, working on it, it's going to be placed into a Word document for us. It's a brand new Word document. Ah, I'm not quite sure where it's disappeared to. The next little thing I want to show you, so getting across the point that everything has to be accessible uh, for your students that uh, the request, so they can read it, so they can uh, be able to manipulate the text or use other features of read and write within the text. The next feature I wanted to show you was the MP3 uh, maker, the audio maker. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the toolbar first and foremost, so I'm going to click on settings. Show more settings and simply add our audio maker to the toolbar. So our audio maker MP3 icon, you can see it there it is in the center of the toolbar now. So uh, the audio maker can be used for a variety of different ways. We had mentioned MFL a little bit earlier on. If you're wanting to create a listening exam for students, you could use the audio maker to do that. There's a variety of different international languages that you can install and download for read and write that you can include in the software as well. To use the audio maker, if you wanted to create this task, for example, uh, or all seven tasks and turn them into an audio file, all you do is simply highlight the text, click on audio maker, and select the folder that you want to save your audio file to. So again, as a just in case I lose it, I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'll call it BTEC Business Studies Instructions and create. Okay, so we converted this question, this case study question, uh, to MP3 file. Student can then click on show. And it shows us exactly where that is stored in my folder. Double click and it'll open up with our default media player. Case study outline. You are part of a team that work for a government agency called Business Northeast. 
the company has been commissioned to hold an exhibition about business opportunities in the Northeast in order to attract and advise people of what opportunities are available to them from starting their own business to employment opportunities. It will also give them some information about the nature of business in the Northeast. Tasks. And then close down that MP3 file. Okay, that's one way you can use the audio maker. Uh, so any notes uh, that you want to provide students, any revision notes, revision materials can be provided to students in uh, audio form. So fantastic for your auditory learners that prefer and find it easier to retain and process information uh, by listening to it um, through MP3 file. So as easy as that, simply highlight any of your text, click on audio maker and it'll turn, it'll create an audio file for you. Uh, for any ebooks that you want to create as well, we quite often get asked about ebooks for English language departments. Uh, yeah, Audio Maker can be used to create, I suppose you could create up to a chapter at a time uh, with the Audio Maker uh, of a book as uh, to provide your students with the book in audio format. Um, I think that's really, really nice to be able to listen to a book and you know, for your auditory learners that find it easier to process and retain the information that they're listening to, uh, an audio file is a fantastic way of being able to provide that uh, to them. The next three features that we're going to look at together, I'll give you a brief uh, look at the dictionary. I'm going to change over to our technology of design and chemistry uh, resources here, just to give you a variety of different subject areas that read and write can be used in. Uh, so technology and design, uh, if we weren't quite sure, for, for example, what technology was, we've got the dictionary. Um, students can use this on a daily basis to help them work out what the word technology means. Uh, so we've got a range of definitions and we've also got the picture uh, taken from the picture dictionary as well for our visual learners to help us gain an understanding of what this term might mean. Now where technology and design comes in here, we've got a list of words uh, that we've got here. You know, suppose they are, it's an equipment list. This may be needed for a project that we're working on. We've got a hammer, a file, a saw, a chisel, a drill, and a sander in here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight each of these terms, I'm just going to highlight them individually. Um, one of the things that I suppose would happen in uh, T&D and subjects like this where students are being introduced to new equipment is they may be unfamiliar with these terms, they may need to get an understanding, get an understanding of them quickly, what they would be supposed to do with these uh, with these uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, but no better way to do this through a vocab list or a, a topic list uh, to introduce to these new topics and to these new items. I've highlighted, uh, by highlighting each of these features, uh, or each of these words, and using the yellow highlighter to apply the highlight to them. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the vocabulary list icon. And what it does is it takes the six words that I've selected, the equipment list, and it's gonna place them into a vocab table, where we'll receive the word itself uh, the dictionary definition, the picture taken from the picture definition, and we're also allowed a fourth column uh, for notes as well, any additional notes that we want to, to make with this. Uh, some of the images, using the images here, saw, perfect example of what a saw is and a saw being used. In fact, that's possibly a verb and a noun, uh, this particular image. I suppose seeing something with your eyes isn't relevant, so they can be easily deleted uh, from there. Now, in this case, it's technology. We're not looking at a file or a filing cabinet there. We're looking at uh, the tool, the file. And the same can be done with the definitions uh, there as well. Those can easily be removed simply by deleting. So there is your technology and design equipment list, you know, finished with the word, the dictionary definition, and the picture taken from the picture dictionary. I suppose a task at this stage uh, that you could provide to students is now that you know what uh, this term is, use your new term in a sentence. My spelling has been atrocious today. Use your new term in a sentence. Um, I used the sander to smooth the edges of the wooden table, something along those lines. So just an idea of how that could be used or set as, a, as a homework task. Okay, apologies about that. So that's our vocab table. Um, easily created by simply highlighting 
the text that we wanted to capture and clicking on the vocab list. It can also be done, just to give you an idea of other subject areas like, um, oh, like science, like chemistry, for example. I'm just going to remove those highlights by pressing the Erase Highlights button. Uh, magnesium, for example, looking up at the picture dictionary, we get the chemical symbol for magnesium. Oxygen. Okay, and so, so if you want to create, uh, I suppose, a vocab list of elements within chemistry, exactly the same thing applies. Highlight the text and simply click on vocab list to create a vocab list with each of those elements. Okay. And again, you've got your dictionary definition in there to support your students. The next feature that I wanted to show you today, uh, just before we finished up, uh, was the voice note. Um, so I'm going to find so comprehension, uh, for example, uh, here just within the English language as a subject. If a student had completed uh, an activity here in this comprehension or even in this particular assignment as well. If they'd completed a task uh, and you wanted to give some feedback, uh, there's perhaps no better way to give that feedback so the student has a perfect understanding of what you want them to do uh, after the feedback by giving them a voice note or applying a voice note, okay? Or even for giving further instructions uh, to a task as well. So click where you want to begin uh, the task, okay? Click on voice note, and in this case, it may be something along the lines of, um, okay, for this task, we want you to produce this in the form of a comparisons table using the format that I provided below. Uh, it's very, very important that you describe in detail using the table how each of the two businesses are different. And then stop, and finally insert your voice note into the text. Now, the student, whenever they come along, will be able to see the voice note, They'll be able to double click on the voice note and open it up from there. Okay, for this task, we want you to produce this in the form of a comparisons table using the format that I provided below. Uh, it's very, very important that you describe in detail using the table how each of the two businesses are different. Okay. That's the way we can leave the voice note. It just gives the student uh, that option to listen to the voice note, to hear your voice and to be able to maybe have a better understanding of what task you want them to complete. Uh, so the voice note, maybe not whenever creating resources, but certainly it could be used in given instruction in your resource, and it can certainly be used uh, to offer feedback to your students as well. But like that voice note, it's an MP3 file that's inserted directly into your text, uh, and whenever the student would close and open up a, a Word document, that voice note would still remain for them, and they'd still be able to see and, and listen to that voice note. Uh, allowed. Um, one last feature I want to show you, just going to go to uh, the comprehension task. So in here we have some, um, in he says to English, at uh, the shop, so Jake went down to the shops. If a student is um, wanting to find out a little bit more information about what shop is or shops are, okay, there we have the dictionary definition of where you can help out with this is in the resources you can simply add in images uh, to support this as well so if I wasn't sure of what the hairdressers was I could simply look up the image and place the image for hairdressers in there uh, police station and insert the image for police station in there as well. To so just give the student a little bit of reinforcement that that's what these terms mean. Um, so there's a perfect example of how you can create, I suppose, more diverse, engaging resources, even just using something like the picture dictionary. Of course, you can insert any notes in here as well, any voice notes to give the students any help. You could even, the question is in here, uh, if you, I suppose the student will be able to use read and write, but you could also insert and include a voice note in here. Question, 
Which shop did Jake's mum tell him to go to? And simply insert the voice note. So a variety of different ways that you can change up your resources, maximizing the tools that are available in Read and Write uh, to help you do so. Folks, I really hope that uh, you got a few tips today uh, from I suppose starting off with the scanner and the screenshot reader by making all things accessible. First of all, you know it's really really important. Uh, Read and Write gives you the tools to do that to convert between PDF files and Word documents, making all text accessible and editable, uh, so that you can perhaps more quickly create the resources and provide your students with the resources that you want them to have. Also with the vocab table as well, being able to provide dictionary definitions, picture dictionary, um, images in there as well to help students build an understanding uh, and reinforcement of what uh, the new terms that they are learning are all about. The audio maker function as well, being able to provide revision notes in audio format, being able to produce ebook or, or sorry, yeah, uh, audio books for your students as well. Uh, the audio maker is a fantastic resource for that. Uh, and also the voice note, being able to leave your feedback, give further instructions with your voice is a valuable tool as well whenever you're creating resources uh, for your students. And it's all available within the Read and Write toolbar. As I say, I'm going to put my presentation up um, again, just so that you have my contact details handy. Um, as I say, I will be on the line for the next five or ten minutes. If you do have any questions you'd like to ask, uh, please feel free to get in touch. It would be be great to hear from you. Certainly afterwards, after today, if you have any other questions as well, it would be great uh, for you to get in touch. One last thing I just wanted to run past you and give you an idea about. We've been getting asked a lot at uh, various events and things that we have been attending about our brand new uh, software solution at RIQ. Um, with RIQ, we are able to provide a standard measurement uh, for writing. So what RIQ does is it, it uses data analytics to automatically grade writing papers digitally and help provide meaningful feedback uh, to students. So to give you a little bit of an example of some of the things that RIQ can provide you with, it takes into account spelling, grammar, punctuation, and will automatically do this on behalf of the teacher. It'll provide you with word count, vocabulary age, time spent on task as well, and given an overall error count uh, in the piece of work that's, uh, that's been created. So at the moment it works as a Google extension and therefore it provides a score on accuracy, spelling, grammar, uh, punctuation and as we say word count and vocabulary age by assessing uh, the writing automatically uh, for the teacher. Using defined rubrics it's faster, more accurate and consistent than traditional manual and subjective grading giving students, parents and teachers clear visibility of writing progress over time against peers and standardized norms that can be used as a comparison benchmark for progression for teachers, schools and even in wide regions. That was the teacher dashboard. What's currently on the screen is the student dashboard and what the student uh, would be able to see. Uh, and there's a little dial uh, on their screen showing their writing bursts, um, the time that they've spent writing uh, today, the total words that they've written, constantly keeping account of that, as well as being able to see any of the feedback uh, that the teacher has given uh, on their piece of work. And of course, uh, along the way, showing any achievements uh, that they have created. So in uh, short, it saves teachers hours of time uh, on spelling and grammar and marking. It's a standardized um, standardized marking uh, of written work, uh, tracks and monitors progress school-wide. It helps to motivate students as well as they're constantly being kept uh, up to speed with what they're doing and getting constant reminders of what they're doing and constant feedback. And uh, I suppose it 
helps to identify individual supports. The other thing about RiteQ is we've been looking at Read and Write. It integrates really nicely and works really, really nicely alongside RiteQ. Uh, RiteQ provides the assessment, the feedback, and the tracking, and Read and Write provides the reading, writing, and comprehension uh, for the two to work very, very nicely together. So just a little bit on RiteQ. Again, if you have any questions about RiteQ and how it works, again, feel free to get in touch. Um, so we'll be hanging around for the next five minutes or so. Any other questions that you have, uh, just let me know. Thank you.